Welcome and welcome again to the F3 podcast where we discuss all things that pertain to faith, family, and finance. And remember, remember, like it says at the bottom, no subject is off limits. We are your host today. I am the lowly but humble. Dr. Lionel M. Blair Sr. I'm just a little nobody oh my trying to tell everybody about somebody who can change anybody. Okay. And I'm sitting next to my grand wife, the sainted mother herself, the woman of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Every place she walked it turns into holy ground. Oh, Lord. <laughs> holy ground. Saint Jasmine the first. Dr. Jasmine Blair. Welcome, everybody, to the F3 podcast. If this is your first time with us, you'll get used to us after a while. Just (laughs) go ahead and buckle your seatbelt. Shout out to all of our subscribers and supporters. Thank you for showing your love, watching the episodes. We're enjoying your comments, getting back to you guys. Listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you have not done so already. You can find out in the show notes how to connect with us, where we are on social media, different platforms and books and things we have. And you can find out how to be an avid supporter of the podcast. And if you've got a topic or a question that you want us to answer, click that link and leave us a voicemail and your topic or question might be here on the next episode. Because remember, we'll talk about what your pastor won't. Be sure to take us with you on the go. You can find us where your favorite podcasts are streamed. So we're going to go ahead and get into today's episode. And I think it would be really, 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 really good. We were having a conversation recently. Yes. And um, I was like, we were like, you know what? We we got to talk about this because we're we're to a place now, right? Where, you know, all these people say on the internet, you know, there's pee in the dating pool and all this oh, good stuff. Boy. And we're actually to a point now where people are not getting married the way that they used to. Yeah. Now there's some good and bad things to that because you know back in the day people stayed in stuff. They had a qu- a, a quantity marriage, not a quality marriage. Yeah. People had stayed in the marriage for the numbers and for the looks, but they weren't happy. They was miserable. Yeah. But now there there's so much hurt and disappointment. It's just like people don't want to get married, and if they get married, they can't stay married. Right. People ain't even lasting four five years no more. No more. Yeah. And I'm like, what in the world? But one of the biggest things that we're seeing uh, on the internet now, all over social media, is these people talking about contributions. You know, in the home. Now, some of these people they living together unmarried. They, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. You you feel that your needs are not met and things are shortchanged. You shouldn't be in that situation. But people are getting married with these expectations, and they're not talking about what should be what. And people are just expecting stuff, right? Right. right. And then when the expectations are not met, now the feelings are hurt. So there's this whole debate going on about, you know, should the man pay all the bills? Should the woman pay some of the bills if she's working? There's a, and then you got people saying, well, it should be this way. It should be that way. Then you got the, the, what what do I want to call, you know, the people who's neutral on everything in a way, well, just let everybody do what's best, (laughs) you know, because we, we, we we don't want to ruffle too many feathers. So we're going to have this conversation today. Um, I don't see it had in too many churches. Uh, The last big name pastor that we're not going to mention that tried to have this conversation, had this conversation in a way that blamed women for men in their inferiority and irresponsibility. So we're not seeing this conversation had either at all or right on a large scale. Right. So we're going to have the conversation here. (laughs) Yes, we are. So I'm going to push this over to you and... I'm going to ask it. How can I? I'm going to ask it this way. So where did this idea, where, where do we get these ideas? Where, where do these ideas come from? Who should do what? Who, who should pay what? Who, who should be responsible for this? Who should be responsible for that? Where do these ideas come from? It's an old school ideology. Um, And I can't say, all of it's necessarily bad, but a lot of it was not used right either. Mm-hmm. Um, and and with societies changing, uh, the economy changing, um, and all this other stuff, we can't do things like we used to do them. 
Like it was nothing for your granddaddy to get a job at a factory, okay, and and make good money working the factory, and the wife can sit at home. Okay, the wife can sit at home and take care of the children, keep the house clean, and all that other stuff. You know, but of course they started shutting down a lot of those factory jobs now and replacing it with other stuff that that's outside of that particular skill set or group of skill sets and expertise. So now the men of today are, they, they have to, they, because back then you didn't need a whole lot of education. Today you got to, have, you got to be competent in other things. Um, in order for you to um, uh, land a decent job, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but a lot of our views today of this stuff, it comes from old school stuff where the man is supposed to provide everything, mm -hmm. right? And the women stay at home. Now, some people may think, oh, well, that's just wonderful. That's a good thing. But see, you know, it, it may not be good for everybody, you know, because see, now let's get into the stresses of being the only provider. Let's get into the stresses of that. And let's also get into the stresses of running a home, okay, by yourself. And then your husband get off work from working hard, takes his shoes off, relax, expects a hot meal, at five o'clock. At five o'clock. Not 502, not 501, five o'clock. Yeah. Expects <laughs> a hot meal after he gets off, take a shower, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? And you done ran behind the children all day. So so we have this standard. Yeah. That come from old school. Way. But see, you, you got to do, I believe you have to do what's best for your family dynamic. Right. So if you don't take nothing away from this, yeah, get that. Do what's best for, for your, your family, dynamic. family dynamic. But what's best for your family dynamic should include a, a conversation and a mutual agreement and understanding. Yeah. 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 Because see, because see, nowadays, you know, and, and, and that's another thing we talked about too, you know, you know, women are starting to, you know... Uh, well, before we go there, backtrack, backtrack. Okay, okay. You're getting ahead of yourself. Okay, okay. So, let's go to the word. Okay. So, these expectations that, that, that people loosely have, where do we find this in the word, if at all? People cherry-pick the word. Mm -hmm. Because they show parts where men seem to be the provider. But... I read the Proverbs 31 woman as well. And y'all know we've, we've had shows about that now. Mm -hmm. You know, I read the Proverbs 31 one woman. And while her husband was rooting at the gates with the elders, she was making that bread at home. So, yeah, mm -hmm. she was at home, but she wants your typical housewife. She had businesses. And matter of fact, she was known at the gates of the city. And matter of fact... Her husband had a lot of favor um, uh, 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 among the elders because of the services that she supplied throughout the community and to the elders themselves through her businesses. So, so the Proverbs 31 woman was not just sitting around making babies and washing dishes. Mm. So all y'all talk about you a proverb 31 woman and you don't got no business. First of all, you, you ain't married. Because I see a lot of people, single people talking about, how about the proverb 31 woman? You a liar. All right. But if you are a proverb 31 woman and you ain't married, you don't got no businesses. You understand what I'm saying? And if what you doing is not enhancing, it's not prospering your household and enhancing your husband in some kind of way. You're not a proverb 31 woman. Mm -hmm. You understand? That man was at the gate handling his business, but she was at home handling business too. And I think that mm -hmm. I think that some men they don't mind. And, and, and I'm gonna say this: some men don't mind bringing home the bacon and having their wife sit at home because they have control. 
Mm -hmm. They have control over everything that's around them. See, see, if 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 you have to lead without being dominant, if you have to lead while being domineering, and you can't lead without being domineering, then you are insecure as a man. Mm -hmm. Because uh, now, now let's get to a lot of these old school relationships now. You know, with a husband, you know, he's uh, providing everything. A lot of them women sat under abuse. Yeah, they did. Come on now. See, a lot of y'all want to handle the women, you know. And, and, and but, but but see, let let's let yeah, y'all say the man is the head, so let's deal with the head first. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's deal with the head of the family first. Okay, which is which is the husband. A lot of these husbands would come home, and and I remember you said this when you got the term white beater from mm -hmm. wife beater from because they would take. They would take their shirt off and had that a t shirt on, mm -hmm. okay, and they go to proceed to beat the hell out their wives, okay. Uh, a lot of these men were abusive uh, to their wives, uh, 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 mostly physically, but if it wasn't physically, it was financially, or sexually, or sexually, because you know you was pe people still had that mindset that the wife was property. People still think like that today. You know, your wife is not a whole nother human being. Your wife is property, you know, uh, and, and, and that kind of mindset goes on a lot uh, 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 in ministry, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard of pastors just just taking it, taking it from their wives. What is that? Who who who, who does that? I mean, I, I mean, you know, for, for a long time, like it, it was it wasn't even against the law to rape your wife. And some people don't think that they, you can't rape your wife. Yes, you can. Well, the Bible said, the Bible said her, her body belonged to me. But the Bible said her, your body belonged to her too. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Bible don't condone you taking something. Exactly. Just because the Bible says she shouldn't, she shouldn't tell you no don't mean that she don't have the option not to. See, y'all be twisting the Bible. Mm-hmm. Y'all be twisting that scripture and 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 and, and trying to make it make it fit how you want to fit. Mm. So, so, so way back in the day, and it's just like it was in Bible times until Jesus came on the scene. Women were considered second class citizens, and women were considered to be property. Yeah, I mean, really, you y'all was a step above the slaves. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, after after the Emancipation Proclamation and all of that other stuff, I mean, women still had to fight for their right to vote. And and I'm starting to realize something, you know. It couldn't work either. <laughs> it was a lot. See, uh, but, but see, I'm starting to realize something, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm like, okay, what is all this big argument, all this big talk? But a lot of this stuff still exists. Yes. This mindset. A lot of the exists. grandma and grandpas that live in this dysfunction of a marriage and family, they, they're still, a, there's a lot of them still alive and with us. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, how is this? How? You know, uh, 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 it's, 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 it's really sad. So, and then you have people that are from a single parent home or maybe from a home where there was a divorce or something, didn't really have a good example. Right. And they're in a marriage and they're just trying to figure it out the best way that they know how. Right. Making it up as they go along. <laughs> and those are the ones that will tell you, stick it out, baby. Mm. Stick it out, you know, pray and trust God. Mm. And all that stuff. Because... Listen, just because granddaddy used to beat the hell out of you, don't mean I'm gonna sit up to you. I'm, I'm gonna sit there and let this joker beat the hell out of me. Exactly. You understand? A lot of that. You know, I, I, I've, I, you know, you know, it's, it's because see, you're you're setting a standard and an example. I, uh, 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 to be passed. I've seen it in my own family. You understand? You're setting an example mm -hmm. to be passed down. The, the 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 father beats the mother and then the daughter grows up and, and then she comes into abusive relationships you know and things like that but she's been she she's she seen her mama stick it out mm -hmm. okay 
she seen her mama stay. So she think that, okay, maybe I should stay and work it out. Okay? And then God forbid if the man literally try to kill you. Mm. Mm -mm. What, what is this? What is this? You know, so so women have to come out of that mindset of just being property. Mm -hmm. You know, number one. We, we need to address well, no, this. No, that's all. number two. Because number, number two. one is men need to come out of the mindset of thinking that women are just property. Right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, so, 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 so we got to deal with this old school mindset first. Because see, there's a generation rising up now that ain't taking it. But see, some of them are going too far in the name of not taking it either. So we need to provide some kind of balance for this. Because now right. we got women saying, oh, I don't need no man. I don't need a man, you know, and I don't, I, I don't. That's a whole nother episode. Yeah. We're going to get there on part two of this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and, and I'm speaking as a man, you understand? I, you got to understand. I'm speaking as a man mm -hmm. um, who has a family, who has a wife. Okay. Who stands up and leads their home. Okay. Um, uh, we have to start treating our wives like human beings. Just because you're the head don't mean you domineer. Just because you're the head don't mean she need permission to go to the darn grocery stuff. That ain't submission. Yeah, Abraham called Sarah, uh, I mean, Sarah called Abraham Lord. All right. But he took care of his wife. You don't see when he was beating her. You, you saw this man leading and obeying God. Okay. Now, I want to go over to the to the financial piece because that's one of the big things that's being talked about. Yeah. Um, you know, and one thing that we have to understand, and you mentioned it earlier, we're not in the days anymore where most life and things can be supported and funded by one income. That's true. You know, so I get it. You know, people say, oh, well, they should be paying this, 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 and this. We're in a different time. Inflation is in a different time than it was back then. Back then, you might have been making $5 an hour. You know, we're not even going back that far. We just go, go back to the 1980s. Right. You, your five eighty five dollars back then was worth more than $17 an hour now. Right. Because of inflation. Right. So we're seeing bigger numbers, but the money's not going as far as it used to. So these people, well, we did it on one income. I went to college. Oh, you just not met. And see, that's my issue with a lot of people from that generation. Let me explain something to y'all. There's something called inflation. OK, yeah. so that means the reason why you were able to do it on like five fifty an hour, because stuff didn't cost as much. So. The $7, $16, 17 $18 an hour today is not as much as the $5.50 that you was making when you was in college and had a baby and all of that. This is not just everybody's just now. You do have people who poorly mismanage and people who uh waste their money and do are they're not financially responsible. But that's not the bulk of the problem. The bulk of the problem is due to inflation. That $17, $18 an hour is not going as far as your $5.50 an hour was back, back then in the late 1970s, early 1980s. So we've got to do So that's nobody's fault. Well, it's somebody's fault, but that's not for this platform. As far as the people we're talking about, that's nobody's fault. You can have responsible people working, managing their money. It's not making an excuse, but it's the reality of it. Most households today simply cannot be supported on one income because of inflation and availability they've taken away a lot of you know factory jobs and things like that yes there's a lot of different things you can do you know without a formal education but regardless of what you're doing we're, we're more so speaking about the paycheck at the end of the day most households cannot be supported on one income mm -hmm. so what I have in front of me, and I saved this so I can put the link under this video so you guys can look at these numbers yourself. This is um, from the Census Bureau Median Family Income by Family Size. And these were cases were filed between May 1st of 2019 and October 2019. So this was before the pandemic. So 
pandemic messed a lot of people up. A lot of businesses were bankrupt. Jobs was eliminated. Some jobs went home, but companies have saved money. But a lot of people still are recovering because it's twenty two, the end of 2022 now. A lot of families are still recovering. But before the pandemic, median household, and now this is the middle. So this, this don't even mean it's where everybody at. This right. is just the middle. Right. This, this is the middle of what they're finding. And this is to live comfortable. This ain't even a little lavish life, right? Median family income, the lowest number I see up here is about 66000 yeah. So that means that that one person's income, and this is by state. I'm going to get into specific states in a minute. Mm. Unless that one person is, is making that 66000 they can't do it by themselves. You know, 66000 sounds like a lot to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. All right, so let, let me get into some specifics. And this is what family of four now. So Florida, $78,833. Mm. Unless that one person is making that kind of money, they can't do it by themselves. You see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, where's this at? Georgia. And this is what family for, $82,476. Mm. South Carolina, $77,494. dollars mm. Let's get a little closer to North Carolina. What's that? $85,021. Virginia, $105,261. And it's for a family of four. So here's my issue with the trend that I'm seeing on social media. Because we're saying that men are not high value or they don't deserve to, to, to be picked or chosen as an option. Come on. Because... They're not making a certain amount of money. But my thing is, most of these women say, are you, are you making, uh, if you're not making that much money by yourself, you can't expect a man that's making that much money. Right. Let, let's, let's go there. Let, let, let's have a little humbling. Let's, let's go to a realistic expectation. How you expect him to come to the table, and there's this whole thing about the table, but you expect the man to show up with a house, with a car, and a job making eighty nine and hundred thousand dollars to take care of all. Are you even making half of that? Yeah. Are you even making half of that? So we most people cannot do that by male or female. You got a lot of people that can't do that on their own. Period. Yeah. It's gonna take two incomes for most households to be able to reach these kind of numbers. That's true. Now again. Like we said in the beginning, and I said, do what works best for your for your household. At the end of the day, that's a decision. But the reality of it is most men can't do this by themselves. Most nobody can't do it by themselves right now. Right. We're talking about a family of four. So we're talking about at least two parents, two kids. You're, you're in that phase of raising kids, actively raising kids. They're not grown at this point. These are some big numbers. Yeah. So when we put the facts out there, the reality is... No, most men can't just work a job and come home and take care of everything the way that they used to. And like I said, this is to live to live comfortably. This right. ain't even lavish. This is just comfortable. Right. You can still get peace every Friday with these kinds of numbers. Right. So we've got to ask ourselves, since society has changed, it can't be done. Well, let me say that. it can be done for most people. Obviously, some people are blessed and favored to a point that work in the principles and strategies to where they can do that. But it's a process, whether you work in them or not. Everybody's not just out here being irresponsible. These are big numbers. So now that we're to a place, OK, we have this understanding. Let's say you've got this man, right? Husband and wife. He can't make all the bills meet by himself. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's two incomes. You working together to make things happen. And that's really what it should be. Mm -hmm. But see, the problem is, now here's nothing wrong with that. And from what I've seen on social media for most women, that's not even their problem. Their problem ain't even the, the putting together to making things happen. Their problem is the men that still come to work. They're, they're in this place, but they still want to come to work and, and come home and then do nothing. Uh -oh. You you still expect dinner on the table at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching this one video and it was hilarious. It was two guys, you know, you know how you can bring people on like your Facebook live or whatever. Yeah. So he brought the guy up there and he said, well, 
why I don't understand what women are doing. And he said, bro, they tired. He was like, what? They t- Aren't you tired when you go home from work? Well, yeah, but I mean, what are they? She, she done went to work. She tired too. Right. He said, so, so, so what are your roles? He said, I do whatever needs to be done. What, what? He said, look, I got five kids. If I can't do it, she do it. If she can't do it, I do And he was so confused. Yeah. He was so confused. How is it that the both of y'all are working full time, but you expect not to contribute anything else when you clock out? Well, that's some lazy that, stuff. That, that. That is, that's the problem that most of these women are having. So to go back to what you were saying, no, it's not right. But that's why a lot of these women are saying, I don't need a man. Mm-hmm. They're saying if I got to contribute here, but I still got to do all of the cooking, I got to do all of the cleaning, I got to do all of the laundry, mm-hmm. I got to do all of the homework, I got to do all of the child rent. What what do I really need you for? Is what they're saying. First of all, how, outside of the sex, what do I need you for? How was these Negroes raised? They wasn't, or they was raised poorly. That, that, that's 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 what I want to know. But see, it, this go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and, and you know, I can I can only go by. To a degree, our dynamic because you had to like make me sit down and stop doing stuff because I'm <laughs> I'm so used to doing stuff myself. You know, I know how to cook, very good. Woo! <laughs> I told you that's what woman, that's what sealed the deal. She said my fried chicken sealed the deal. Yeah, and then that chili that you made oh, that yeah, day, I'm gonna whip something. Up. I'm like, this a whole pot. You don't just whip up to you know you gotta have certain ingredients at home to be able to just whip up some chili. Yeah, and I just I just made it on the fly. But you know, I know how to cook. The deal. I know how to wash clothes. I know how to clean. Like first of all, iron. Woo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know how to do all that stuff. You know, I can wash a car. I can take the car to get an oil change at least. I'm not a mechanic, mechanical expert, but I know how to take it to the shop. Like I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I, I know how to put gas in the car. Like you don't who act raised like y'all? You, you can't do anything. Who raised y'all? Like, 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 like. These A lot some... of people didn't, and and see, they're expecting to marry women that's gonna finish raising them. It's just like now the new thing is, you know, you see a lot of men. Well, ain't ain't men the prize too? I want flowers. I want candy. I want to be taken on a date. If you want to be treated like the lovely lady you are, just say so. Don't bring me no flowers. <laughs> bring me. A... <laughs> Don't 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 bring me no flower. Bring me a Rolex or something. You know, don't bring me no flowers. You know, don't 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 don't. don't and again, don't. nobody's saying don't do anything nice. Nobody's yeah. saying don't honor your husband. But you literally have men on social media whining about this, and I'm just now certain things about the old school we shouldn't lose. You Absolutely. Know? Um, um, the 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 respectable healthy pursuit of a woman absolutely we shouldn't lose that oh they don't want to do that no more you know i you know i'm not you know you, they you don't know. even holler want to pay for dinner no more it's like can can you go get the two for 20 or something yeah i mean you know and, and you know i'm not against a woman paying for dinner either sometime but you know can you pay for it sometime like do do, do, do y'all gotta go half every time you know, there, there, there's a like, lack of an investment. This is even before. Let, let's backtrack because even before we get to the, the marriage piece, there's a lack of investment amongst a lot of these young men. I told you a lot of these men in factory defective. This they need to go back. There's there's a lack of an investment. If nobody's saying you have to be balling, but if you don't want to pay twenty dollars for dinner, how am I supposed to trust that that you can take care that you got me? You see what I'm saying? I'm I'm supposed to follow you. That I feel like the blind leading the blind. If you can't pay twenty dollars for dinner, nobody's saying we got to go to dinner every other day or every week. But if you're not even willing to invest twenty dollars towards something towards a future, how am I supposed to expect to follow you for you to be a father to my kids? You see what I'm saying? Take care of me. Be a place of peace. To be able to speak into me. To cover me spiritually. To pour into me. To wash me with the water of the word. If you can't put up twenty dollars for a, a burger, a veggie burger, and some fries, I highly doubt that you can do any of the above mentioned. Then this is where we've got to really see the value of this. Yeah. So this was you no. Know, I don't know why I'm still saying these women don't want a good man. No, they want to see an investment. Yeah, it's called an investment. Yes, an investment is something you might get a return on it. You might not. It's a risk. But if you can't risk $20, $30 for, for a meal, 
then you you're not ready to be a husband and, and it's fine but you got some of them they they do these investments in the beginning then they get married and they stop doing all this stuff mm. so now we're back to what we were talking about with these expectations with these gender roles a lot of people typically ex most people they expect their spouse to do whatever they saw at home mm. so it's just like okay if you was raising a single parent household and your mama did everything, it never dawned on some of these people to get up and do other stuff. Right. Well, my mom just did all that. See, this is why I believe in chores. Yeah. This is why I believe in chores. Yeah. Now, that's something from the old school we, we don't need to get rid of. I believe we gave a lot of chores in the past too soon. But this, this is why I believe in chores. Yes, everybody... Male, female, son, daughter, everybody should know how to wash, wash laundry, dishes, wash, wash laundry, all that. Mop, clean the bathroom, scrub the tub, vacuum, dust. Baby, our son sweep. nine years old, and he know how to wash his own laundry. He washes his own laundry every week. You know, the age I learned how to wash laundry? How? 17 years old. That's too late. I learned 17 I years old. I, was, I won't raise right. I was so. probably about eight, nine when I started washing them. I was 17 By the time years. I was 10, I could clean a whole kitchen and mop it. I was 17 day. years old when I learned how to uh, 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 wash laundry. The only thing my dad ever told Well, it me. was people in college that didn't know how to wash laundry. Come knocking on my door. Excuse me. Um, I saw you in the laundry room the other day. Can you help me? By the Are you serious? Yes. I'm like, your mama sent you to college and then teach you how to... I'm not sure what to put in. Is this the got the bleach over the color clothes? I think it's this one. No, baby, you're going to be throwing this whole basket of clothes in the trash. Why you send your child to college that can't wash laundry? I had a roommate who didn't never clean the toilet before. Never clean the toilet. I'm like, but child, y'all, y'all done sent her to college. They and See, that's the type of woman that's going to get married and expect the husband to just do all the clean because she don't know how to clean. No, we can't do this. Stop failing your children like this. All right, stop. See, <laughs> but see, I had enough sense to. I mean, I, ain't nobody <laughs> taught me nothing. Nobody taught me how to be a man. Mm -hmm. Nobody taught me how to be a father. I had to learn all that stuff. Nobody taught me how to be a husband. I had to learn all that but stuff. But see, it's not clicking for some of these people. To first of all, there's a pride for a lot of men. You got it's okay what you didn't learn. Women too. It's okay what you didn't learn. It's okay that you weren't raised. But like you said, you had enough sense to know what you didn't know and yeah. to get some type of guidance. The problem is we're not getting guidance. We're just experimenting on each other and raising kids in the process. I remember I'm, I remember before we had LG, we took we took parenting classes because because we wanted to make sure we were doing it right. Not that we didn't know stuff. We want to make sure we were doing it right. It's okay not to know, okay? But what's not okay mm -hmm. is when you continue in that ignorance. That okay? part. And you start pretending like you know, and you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing, you know? Uh, and, and, and let me say this to y'all men, okay? A lot of y'all did not receive correct fathering. A lot of y'all did not. Some of y'all were spoiled from your mama. Okay, because because I, I don't know why, but it's natural for women to spoil their son sometimes. All right, um, especially if you got a helicopter mama, mama that control everything. Some of y'all gonna have to realize that y'all mamas, the, the, though they was well in well, well intentioned, they failed you. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of y'all need to submit to some kind of male, not female. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have a spiritual mom or whatever, but you need a father. Absolutely. You need some kind of male mentorship, spiritual fathering, uh, or rather it's your pastor. I don't care if it rather is the deacon at the church, okay, or your apostle or whoever. You need to be around a male example to, to, to see male mannerisms, do male stuff, okay? Now, 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 listen. I believe mothers can teach sons. I, I, I believe that. You know, this thing my wife has taught my son things that she taught it better than I would ever teach it. But being around a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all weaken your manhood. Yeah, because you ain't been around a man enough. You ain't been around men enough. You was always around your mama. You was always around the women at the church. You was all around your aunties. 
You know, some of y'all was raised by, by nothing but women. And that's why you struggle getting close to any kind of male uh, leadership that seems a little um, abrasive. So you, you equate that to being harsh and not loving and all this other stuff. And you just hang around a bunch of women or, or you know, men who are effeminate. Okay. You, you, you need male leadership. And I'm not talking about that toxic male leadership, alpha male beat your chest, kind of like a gorilla. I'm not talking about that. All right. But you need solid male leadership. Okay. That's what you need. And a lot of these men have not been raised right. Mm -hmm. Because, he, oh, okay, I just saw some. A lot of them grew up under these traumatized women. Yeah. You know, who may have been in an abusive relationship or neglectful relationship or whatever the case may be. And then you raising your children with all that. You, you raise your children with all that. Men like that, mm -hmm. men like that are, uh, they will either you know, take a lot of abuse or become the abuser. Mm -hmm. I've seen it done. I've seen it done, you know, and, 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 and I think too, when you are a man and you expect your wife to do everything and while you sit around and twiddle your thumbs and do nothing, I think that's a form of abuse. Absolutely. Uh, because it's, it's a way to throw your weight around. Mm -hmm. not even considering your wife, not even considering the fact, okay, she tired too. Uh, whether she a stay at home mom or she go to, she get up and go to work just like you. She tired too. And that's the thing that we've got to really address in this whole value piece. If we're going to say that, oh, well, you cannot assess a man's value by his paycheck. It has to be the same thing for women. Yeah. Everybody is valuable regardless of the dollar amount that they earn, but you can't see yourself superior because you go to work and somebody stays home. Right. You just can't do that. Your paycheck does not absolve you from contributing at home. Now, again, do whatever's best. I don't see why you would pass the opportunity up for additional bag. If the both of y'all can work together and get a bag and put it all together, why would you pass up not having two bags? That doesn't right. make sense to me, but, but go get the bag. There's two bags that can be go got and, and you can make it work. And, 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 and you can get the bag, both y'all can get the bag and then you can invest that money. Absolutely. Okay. There's plenty of ways to invest. There's plenty of solid ways to invest your money. All right. But you can't expect to sit up here and, and, and uh, had this man do everything and you do nothing, but then you you think you got all the rights to the money. Yeah, and vice versa. Just because you go get the bag and you may have some, that does not absolve you from doing anything at home. But I'm going to save that for part two. Any closing remarks on this episode? I think we've covered a lot. Yes, we have. I'll say this again. You know, when it comes to standards, it looks different for everybody it's according to you what works for your household dynamic don't let anyone judge your household dynamic based upon an outdated um model or example that really statistically won't even work in st today's it won't society even, absolutely it won't work so 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 you know un unless you balling unless you balling and you wise with your money Okay, a lot of a lot of these little old school ways mm -hmm. of raising a family and the expectation for a husband and wife is just not going to work. Because because half of y'all don't make enough money anyway. You know, until you start making that kind of money, then that can be this can be in the conversation. Absolutely. And I'll say this, no matter what dynamic you pick for your household, it never works best for one person to be doing everything at home. No, period. Indeed. There's always something to do. And if you're in a place where you feel like because you earn a paycheck, you, you get a, a get out of con contribution at home free card, you already coming into it with the wrong mindset. But listen, we'll pick this up on part two. Be sure to check out those links. 
Find out how you can become an avid supporter of the F3 podcast. Drop us a voicemail with your show topics and be sure to follow us over on IG at King and Queen Blair. Until next time on the F3 podcast. Goodbye.